Hi, I'm Larry Lawton, America's biggest jewel dealer. Join me as I walk you through my past robberies, how I planned them, executed them, and ultimately got caught. I'm going to show you how we did things in prison, like making a tattoo gun, making wine, making white lightning. It's going to be very educational. These are the untold stories. Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I'm going to be making a tattoo gun, just like we did in prison. And I'll show you the little thing, the alternate ways we used to do it as well. Depending on what uh, prison you're in and what you can get one way or the other off the commissary. Uh, before I get started, check out the sponsorship. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped. I know I've never shown you how easy it is to trim your nose and ear hairs with the Manscaped Weed Whacker. But believe me, it's the easiest tool to use to look clean and neat. Scissors are dangerous with cuts and snips. This nose and ears trimmer comes with the same proprietary skin safe technology from their lawn mower body trimmer, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs. They use an intelligently contoured design that features a 23 degree angle, which matches the natural ergonomics of your nose. Pulling a bunch of nose hairs is way too painful and you can get an infection. Believe me, I know. The premium Manscaped Weed Whacker uses a powerful 9,000 RPM motor with a 360 degree rotor dual blade system to safely whack your weeds. You want me to show you how easy it is to use? Let me show you. And there you have it. Use the easiest tool to look presentable. So please use this URL and get 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped. It's manscaped.com slash jewel. Okay, let's get right to this video, you know, and a lot of people asked for this video, so I thought I'd get it. In prison, we used to be able to get these. Just a regular head trimmer. You know, some places sold them, some didn't. Uh, what would happen would be is a guy would come from another prison and they could bring their prison items from another prison. Usually they'd let them in. Some places were assholes. But usually you have your property. You go get your property after you get to your new unit or your new prison. And they go through the property and they'll let you have something that was sold at another prison. Because sometimes there's different kind of sneakers or, or shoes. I have, believe it or not, I still have from prison a pair of moccasins. I'm going to show you them. Boat shoes, actually. They were sold in Coleman, Florida. And I have those boat shoes. To this day, I have them. But uh, you, that's how you move items from one prison to another. Some places had trimmers, little, little trimmers, and in the trimmers you have motors. Now, what we needed this, this uh, thing was for is to get the motor out. You just get the motor. Obviously, the motor has what it comes with to on and off, and a little thing on the top that spins, and that is your motor. And obviously, it's, it's going to be easy to hook a battery up to this and start it up to propel my needle. So those are the things. A lot of prison uh, also sell little sewing kits, little ones, sometimes even littler than this. So it's not like, oh, they, you know, they're worrying about having a weapon as a needle. Again, I took these needles out because we're going to use the needles, obviously, for your needle on your tattoo gun. Now, we'd also, you know, get everything else from it. I'm going to use a lighter today, but normally we would use, uh, we'd make fire in the prison out different ways. We'd make it with the toilet paper. If you haven't seen that video, go back into the library and I'll show you how I uh, started a fire with toilet paper. You can do it anywhere with a, uh, a pack of cigarette, uh, the cellophane or a snicker bars, uh, not snicker bar, Hershey bar, the cellophane wrap and uh, a couple of batteries and you could start a fire very easily. So there's different ways, but we believe it or not would, you know, get, first of all, some prisons had matches when smoking was there. No more, obviously. But believe it or not, you don't think we would scam a lighter off of a counselor's desk or something. Believe it or not, we did. We did a lot of that. Obviously you have your, and I call this the state toothbrush. These are given out to everybody in prison and they go in a hole in the packages. They even have the little ones, but they also have the big ones. Obviously the razor, and here's how we get a razor out, and I did that video. And then we hide the razor, I would always hide it in a book like this. 
And now I have my razor. And you always need a razor in prison. It's like having a, uh, you know, a scissors or stuff like that. I also have here just a piece of cardboard, which is off of everything, any box in there, anything like that. And I'm gonna actually put my ink on that, but that'll be done. So now you have your uh, uh, equipment to make a tattoo gun. And believe me, it's not gonna be uh, as difficult as you think. You take your toothbrush, and the first thing you do is you cut the whiskers off. And it's not a hard proposition to do, obviously. You have a razor blade. See, now look what it is. It's really, it's how shanks are made as well a lot of times. But, uh, you know, we make these. And another thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sometime is how I used to make razor combs. We would take a comb they give you in prison and actually heat it and put a razor blade in it and make it as a weapon and you can slash people with it and stuff like that. But anyway, here's all your stuff on, on there. I don't care about that. Now you have your toothbrush, call it what it is. All it is is a toothbrush. Now, if you take this toothbrush and you just heat it, but you don't heat it where it's no good, you heat it where it can bend. See what I just did? Now look. Now, I'm actually gonna heat it a little more so it's not springing back. And then you, what you do is you let it harden. See, it's gonna get hard now. This is gonna be the barrel on the top and then the motor is gonna go on the side. That's how this, or the opposite way. It does not matter which way you do them. All I'm doing is making an L out of a toothbrush. That's your first step. Now, if you're gonna try this at home, I did not. I don't recommend this for anybody doing it at home. Uh, first of all, if you're gonna get a tattoo, get a tattoo by a professional for sanitary reasons and stuff like that. Uh, and also uh, health reasons. Plus, you don't wanna hurt yourself. You just won't wanna be in your house. You don't want your mom, dad, or anybody else for that matter saying, look at these crazy things. We only did things in prison, everybody because we had to. That's the only reason. We had to do what we were doing. That's it. So now look, it's getting hard. It's already hard. Can't even move it. See that? Look at that. It's hard. Can't move it. So now this is gonna be the base. The next thing you gotta do, is you gotta prep your needle. That's the number one thing. So you get a pen, any pen, you take off the bottom. Okay, you take off the bottom, take this out like that. Now, you wanna use this is gonna be your barrel of your needle. Now, in some prisons, we would be able to get guitar string, thick guitar string that's straight. And we would actually use that and file that down and be the long piece of guitar string. Now, that's one way to do it. Since we don't have that, Look what I just did. I took this out and I'm going to put this back in the pen like this because my needle is going to go through this and that's my, my chamber. Now you have your pen. You take off the top. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass so you got to use your teeth or whatever. Once this is off, okay. You put this aside, you don't need this anymore. This is gonna be my barrel of my pen. But it's also gonna be my ink. Now we used to make ink a number of ways. Yes, you would put this ink in your body. Other inks we would put in our bodies, we'd take uh, grease, hair grease that the black guys would buy off of the commissary and we would literally burn it in a can, it's a can, it comes in like a little can, you burn it, and when you burn it, the soot comes up and we catch it on loose leaf. But here's what you can do here. Just steadily, see what's happening? The ink is coming out. 
See, because in here, this ink is what I'm gonna dip my needle into. I'm gonna put my needle into that ink and make it go in my body. And some of these tattoos, everybody, are done with this stuff. Look at my tattoos and look up close and you will see this is all done in prison. Most of my tattoos are done in prison. So all of this stuff and all these scenes you see are done in prison. Now the air is coming through so you know you got a lot of it out already. So you leave like that, that, and that's good for a while. You don't have to worry about it like drying up or something like that right there. It's a lot of ink there. So that's what you do there. Okay, now you have your barrel and you gotta do two things with this barrel. You take your teeth. I'm flatting it out, if you could see. I don't know if I could show you. Now you're wondering why am I flattening it? Why am I flattening this barrel out? Okay, you got the ink out. Some guys would do this overnight, would would actually let the ink go, blow, keep letting it go and letting it go, letting it go all night and leave it that so it's totally empty. I never worried about it that much. See, I'm making that flat because I need to put a hole in that. And you're wondering why do you need to put a hole in that? Because here is your motor and here is the top of the motor. Right here, the little thing that spins round and round. That's gonna go in here and that's gonna go back and forth like this. That's what's gonna happen. You know, people say, without tools, how are you gonna do something? Well, you become, again, you become very innovative. So sort of the next thing you do is you have it like that and then you take a needle. Now I suggest you either use a, a tissue or something of this nature, because it's gonna get hot. And then I want you to heat it up. Almost like being sterile, but you're not sterile, obviously. You're just making it very, oh look at that, it's getting blue hot. And then you go like this. If anybody can see what I'm doing, I'm actually going in there. And obviously, you see it? It's on both sides, but I'm gonna heat it again and get it really, 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 really a good hole. That's literally red hot. This is tedious work. Making a tattoo gun, doing, making fires, making coffee. All of this can be very tedious work in prison. Now, I'm using a lighter, but we sometimes would make a burner, an actual burner in prison, and when we made that burner, boy, we did so much stuff when we had that open. Now, see, it's, there you go, it goes a little bit better. Look at that, it's going in there. So now, I'm just gonna make sure that this fits in my motor. Obviously, you wait till it cools down a hair, Make sure it goes. Look at that. There it goes. Now, you see the way that is? So, when that goes back and forth, that's going to, it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, before you do your cuts and everything, you have this. Now, you're going to want, you're, you're going to have a needle that goes on the end here. So, you're going to want to cut this down. You're going to want to cut this shaft down to be, oh, that's gonna go over the motor like this. So I normally, Larry Lawton, used to cut it down to, uh, depending, I used to have a pretty good eye, you can get them all the time. And it did not matter which ones it was, but I would cut it like this. And you see what I'm doing? You don't have to cut it perfect, but you wanna start it so when you do do it, and when you snap it, it's gonna be good. That's where it's gonna snap. That's what you wanna do. And now, see what I did there? I, didn't, I was no rocket scientist. I didn't have to do much. I hope I did enough. Now that's gonna go through here and come down and look at that. See, that's what's gonna happen. Because you're gonna have your motor here and I'm gonna tape it to it right now and this one right here and that's how it's gonna go. So we'd always have masking tape and we used to get masking tape everywhere. You know, the guys who work in the CMS shop, they'd be the painters and stuff, would always get this. And they would never give it to you in a roll. It would come on the end of a pen. 
And what I mean by that is you'd see it like this. A guy would come in and a guy who works in the shop just goes like this and Now that would be in your locker. Usually the guards didn't give a shit about that, but you always had tape. And you remember when I talked about suitcasing, and yes, I know I did talk about that. You'd actually do that as well. So you'd take it, and you'd say, hey man, you got a piece of masking tape, get me some masking tape. And, and everybody did it for whatever reason. So you'd have your masking tape, you set your, your motor, making sure that this is gonna come through. And I tape this barrel of this pen, knowing I'm gonna go like that, and then I would tape this like this. Now, notice I am taking my time, and I'm gonna do this right. You see the ink? We'd sometimes put it in something and keep it and seal it so we could keep the ink fresh. I mean, obviously, if you left it out all day, it would be uh, no good, but you don't leave it out all day. Now look how I'm making, I'm making this tight, so I'm gonna make it good. I'm gonna use this stuff off my pen since I don't have to keep this in my locker. <laughs> wow, you guys are making me do stuff. It's bringing back memories, everybody. It really is. Uh, some good, some bad, obviously. Now look, this is the barrel. This is what you're gonna do this. You're gonna This is gonna be my pen. This is gonna be my tattoo gun. Now, you really don't want this to move that much, so you double check it. Listen, it depends on how much tape you have, and a lot of things depend on who's around and who can help you. I used to love, when I made a gun, you make your own needle too, so you don't have to share needles. Obviously, that's the biggest way diseases are passed. The next thing you do is you tape your motor up here because you're going to be going through here. I'm do, all I'm doing is making sure that this is really good. Again, tight, tight, tight. I'd watch how much tape I had left and be a little bit cautious, depending if I'm gonna break the gun down, I'm gonna use it for two, three tattoos. So now you're saying, what do you do with this? Okay, looks pretty good though, right? It's pretty set. And this is just a battery pack. Now we make battery packs differently. It's just a piece of wire, so you can get the wires from anywhere. But we would get battery packs and make, some guys would make like, four double A battery. It's just stronger. And it will last a lot longer. It's a lot more juice. These are just double A, triple A batteries to show you how it works. Now, you take your needle. Now, if I'm using the same needle, which I would, I mean, it didn't matter. I would clean it off. We used to get pieces of sandpaper and make them really, really good. Now, you get your thing here. You put it in here about halfway in, it's right in the middle, and then you have a piece of tissue ready, you heat this. Now look at it, it's on fire, and smoosh it together. You're making sure that it can't move, which it can't. See that, it can't move. See that? Look at that. Now, look at that. That's a pretty good shaft. Now, obviously, this might not fit through there, and it might on the double check. See? Does it go through there? If it doesn't, it's not a big deal, but I'm going to make sure it goes through good. All of this here is just melted plastic that secures it. And if I'm a little thing, just go a little bit more, heat it up. You can roll it. You can do it any way you want and make it tighter. Now, will it go through? I don't know. So if it's not going through, and it did. Now you put this on here. Okay. This is a tattoo gun. Now what's gonna happen is this thing is gonna go back and forth with this motor turning and you're gonna see it right now. 
So all you do, ladies and gentlemen, is you put your positive to whatever that is. Now I would normally probably need more juice and see how I can do this. Now normally, everybody, you'd make these battery packs, we used to call them. Guys would make them for their radios so they'd have longer life. They'd get double, uh, the big D batteries, which they did sell. And you can make a battery pack for your radio so you didn't blow through, through uh, batteries all the time. Because believe it or not, you'd be surprised how much you can go uh, batteries in prison. So now here you are. You're connected to positive and a negative, And then you go to the game. You go to positive and a negative in the game. But you get your battery pack, and then it goes like this. I just got it. I'm not going to sit here all day and do it. But look at that. I will come back, and look at that. I love that. That was a pretty good job I did right off the bat. Now all you need is your battery pack on here, and your needle would be able to go and do a tattoo. And you dip into the ink, and you, and you dip into the ink, and that's how you do a tattoo gun. You know, it, it, it's amazing how we used to do this kind of stuff. And I, I'm looking at this tattoo gun. And I'm going to actually do a tattoo on somebody, I think, with this gun. I'm just going to put the, uh, the uh, uh, build a right battery pack on it and then make it a strong one. Because I think this, this gun I made is actually pretty good. And that's all it takes for a tattoo gun to work, guys. That is it. You make sure this is down, and which it is. You know, you'd look at it and you'd watch a tattoo artist. And, and they would then be down there like this. <laughs> And, and all of this tattoos, all of this is all what they call single needle tattoos. So single needle tattoos. Now in tattoo parlors today, they'll have 10 needles coming out. And they call them shade needles. We didn't have those in prison. We had these. This is a tattoo gun. Now, yes, I didn't get the battery pack right. And I just wanted to get this one to you. And I think you'll understand everything I just did and... Trust me, don't trust this. Don't try this at home, everybody. I don't want to see anybody get, get sick or something of that nature or get hepatitis, anything. I don't know what you're going to get. But uh, we just have such a great immune systems in prison because, man, we went through so much shit in there. But it is. Look at that tattoo gun. And now that's actually a good tattoo gun with a good motor. And that's actually how it runs. Now, again, there's different ways we would do these tattoo guns. I'm going to keep this one, everybody. Sharpen it and do it. And I'm actually going to do a tattoo with this one. Because I like the way it's moving. I just need bigger batteries to charge. I didn't know if I'd need bigger batteries. Anyway, I think you get the drift. I think a tattoo gun can be made very easily. And that's just from stuff right here. I think it's a great little item. And I think you guys will now understand what it is. I hope you like these videos. Uh, I got so many more ideas of other stuff we made in prison. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm thinking really about doing the uh, making hooch. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you uh, learned something today. This is the educational channel now. <laughs> I'm only kidding, obviously. But it is the prison education. Pass this video on as well. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong. Please stay out of trouble and make good choices. Have a great day.